Gold Derby fans, we're bringing back an old favorite today, and I don't mean Rob. I mean the idea that Rob and I, Rob LaCurry and I, Chris Beecham, we are. We used to do this every year: twenty-four Oscar categories in twenty-four minutes. And we're gonna not gonna spend one minute on each category because some of them are almost one hundred percent locked in, I think, and and some though really need a debate. So we're gonna we're gonna keep the whole thing to twenty-four minutes though, and give you all of our predictions as they stand right now with about what is it, 12 days from the Oscar ceremony. So we we reserve the right to still change, but here's where we stand right now. So Rob, I don't know any better place to start than Best Picture. What's in your first slot right now? Well, Chris, um, first of all, it's so great to be back with you Mark, for this chat. Look, I think Best Picture is gonna give me a lot of heartburn over the next few weeks, and I'm still sticking with Shape of Water, although I'm really close to flicking it over to three, bill three billboards, especially given that it's its success at the BAFTAs, but look, I am really confused about Best Picture. What are you doing? Well, if you look at my page right now, it says Shape of Water. I think the nice thing for us is I think a month ago, we were really debating four movies, maybe even five if you want to throw in Dunkirk. I do think it's down to the two you mentioned. I think it's Shape of Water or Three Billboards. I've got pluses and minuses for both. I think for me, Shape of Water, the, the two things that hurt the most to Three Billboards to me are the lack of the director nomination. That one to me is more critical than any of the others we talk yeah. about. I know Shape of Water did not get a uh, SAG Ensemble nomination, but I mean, we, it, it, and that really hurt La La Land, it seemed, last year. Yeah. Um, they both have the editing nomination, which is critical. Get Out does not have that. I just think that directing nomination, when he got in everywhere else, Martin got in at BAFTA, he got in at DGA, it yeah. really feels like a slight. Um, but the second reason and the more important reason with that preferential ballot, I think Three Billboards is more divisive and I think that has hurt. There's two kinds of divisive to me. There's the divisive of, oh, La La Land is the, the overwhelming front runner, I wanna go another way. That, that's one kind of divisive. Another, where they don't really hate it, but they're, maybe they were disappointed after all the other awards or, yeah. but I know certain people that hate Three Billboards. I mean, with yeah. a passion. The, they think it's racist. They think it doesn't earn the twist towards the end of a certain character becoming better. Um, those kind of people are gonna rank it eighth or ninth. That's right, and that's the issue that keeps holding me back. Because we've all speak, spoken ad nauseum about the rules. There's going to be a rule that we all adhere to every year will be broken this year, and we're talking about Shape of Water not having the SAG Ensemble, Three Billboards not having the directing nomination, but that divisiveness has held me back from giving Three Billboards my number one slot. And the Shape of Water is a safer bet. It seems to be more accepted and liked, even if you didn't love it. But I, I, I haven't met anyone that hates it. So I am so confused. Dunkirk, I think, is gone. Get Out, I think, will struggle, unfortunately, because I love that film. And Lady Bird as well, I think, is probably behind the eight ball. So it's between those two, but I think Shape is probably the safer bet at this point in time. We, like I said, we both reserve the right to change. Yeah. By the way, anybody watching this, you can win our predictions contest. We had somebody last year that got, I think it was 22 out of 24, and they, they, um, they didn't even know a whole lot about movies. I mean, that was, and that was a good thing last year because there were so many upsets. Um, they, 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 yeah. the fact that they didn't know much actually helped them. So get in there and make your predictions all the way up until the uh, ceremony starts. Well, that takes us to director. I, I think the next few we're about to talk about, yeah. I can't imagine Guillermo not winning, right? Yeah, look, really, I think it's, his, it's, it's like it's already preordained. He's won everything that he needs to win. Um, it's locked. If it doesn't happen for him, I will be. I will be on the floor. So that's happening. Yeah, he's he's such a visionary director. He's never been up for directing before. Neither has Christopher Nolan. But I think if Nolan was going to win, we would have seen some support at BAFTA. To be yeah. honest. Yeah. So let's do the four acting categories. I double checked this stat before we started, and it's true. There's only been one person ever in the in the in the twenty two the twenty four years of SAG Awards and Critics' Choice Awards. Of course, Golden Globes have been going on longer, but one person lost after winning SAG, Globe, BAFTA, 
critic's choice, only one, and that was Russell Crowe, and he got in that altercation after that, <laughs> yeah. right when Oscar voters started voting. So there was, yeah. there was a circumstance. All four actors this year have won all four of those prizes. Yeah. So I, and none of them are, they're all kind of journeyman actors, uh, respected, likable. I, I just can't imagine, we, we could just kind of talk about them as a group. I can't imagine Francis McDormand, uh, Gary Oldman, Sam Rockwell, and Alice and Jenny losing at this point, can you? No, I don't think so. And unless Alice and Jenny throws a phone at someone um, at some ceremony in the next week, because given that Oscar voting started today, right? In this where yeah, you are, that's right. It started yesterday where I am. Um, I think Alice and Jenny is the only one that is probably 99%. The other three are 100. That's just how I see it because I just still hold out a very tiny glimmer of hope for Laurie Metcalf. But that was like pre-Globes, it was Laurie Metcalf as far as I was concerned. As soon as the Globes hit, it's just been these four, got, these four actors have won everything, as you say, and I just can't imagine in any scenario where anyone else is going to win these four prizes. I think the two leads are more safe. I think yeah. the only question that comes into my mind, and that's for any of these 24, well, some of them people really haven't talked about, like the shorts when we get to those, but there is an extended voting period this year. We don't normally have voting completely starting for fresh after everything else is over, you know, BAFTA is now over. Because of the Olympics, the uh, Oscars moved to the first weekend of March. You could get those those random voters, enough of them maybe that go, it could be in anything, they go, don't tell us what to do. You know, we're yeah. gonna decide what we wanna do. And that's where a surprise might come in. But I don't know, I don't know who that, I mean, Laurie Metcalf, I think is in second place. I think um, Willem Dafoe is probably in yeah. second place on supporting actor. I can't, unless Gary Ullman does something or, I just don't know who I don't know who would overtake. There's not really that strong, strong second place person. There really isn't. And even in actress, you could have made an argument for any of those, perhaps maybe apart from Meryl. So really, the, those are locked in, and it's kind of boring. But I think it's all deserved. I don't think anyone's going to be terribly unhappy about that. I don't mind boring, but I'll tell you the, the thing that bugs me more than about anything right now in our forums or on Twitter or Facebook or anywhere that you look, I can't stand that. I don't want to hear one more person in my life say, you know, I just want upsets. Please give me upsets. Yeah. Look, these four actors talking about these four categories, the last thing they want at this point is an upset. I mean, they've done everything possible along the way to get this win. It shouldn't be just because people are getting restless that they lose. Yeah. I mean, I, I would not have minded any one of these races being competitive all along the way, but at this stage, they've Let done them. what they need to do. They're all very, they're excellent in, in their roles. Let's just, I mean, let's just give it to them. I don't like those yeah. kind of surprises. Let because them that, that, that would be devastating to any one of those four. Can you imagine? Truly devastating. I mean, imagine being Gary Oldman and then being picked by, say, Timothy Chalamet. It would just be horrifying. The thing is, I love a good upset. We all enjoy it for the drama, but let's let's let these four actors win those trophies, please. I would feel so bad for them if it didn't happen. Adapted screenplay. I mean, Call Me By Your Name has won basically everywhere, Writers Guild, BAFTA, and it's the only Best Picture nominee in this group. It's got to win, right? Yeah. And James oh, Ivory's a legend. James Ivory, the, I mean, he's, he's James Ivory. He went up and ambling up onto the BAFTA stage to collect his prize a couple of days ago, I think really helped just at the right time. He's so adorable. He's so lovable. He's such a legend, and his screenplay is so brilliant. The only Best Picture nominee, no brainer. I remember last, we always discuss these um, honorary, you know, the Governor's Awards over in the summer, and he was on my list of people I thought they might give one to, uh, give it to last time because of his directing career. I had no idea at that point last you know, July that he was the writer on Call Me By Your Name. So it was almost like they were waiting to see, you know, if he would, if this movie would pan out and that he might get in uh, and win one on his own and not, not be giving an, an honorary. Yeah, absolutely. All right. This has got to be, is, this is as tough as any category of the whole night. Pretty That's much. Screenplay. Yeah, I, I think 
for the longest, longest time, I thought it could be any of four. I didn't think the big sick based on its lack of best picture, but the other four, I thought, you know, you can make a case for all of them. I do think it's down to two now. Do you think it's the same two that I do? I think it's down to Get Out and Lady Bird. I think you agree. I no, see I don't have, I think Lady Bird, if Lady, Lady Bird was going to win screenplay, I think it would have won somewhere. Globes, BAFTA, uh, Writers Guild, somewhere. I think it's three billboards. You don't think that Lady Bird could do a milk scenario and just kind of come out there? Well, that was my favorite movie of the year, to be honest. I would not mind at all if Greta won, but I just think there's, Lady Bird has not won a single award since the Globes. Not True. one, not at a guild, not at any of the televised ceremonies. Yeah. It still seems to be faltering. I, I just think the three billboards a nomination will be, again, quite divisive. If, if you have issues with this, with, with this movie, it's generally probably the screenplay. That's, for example, just personally, my issues with this film are with the screenplay. Not that that's going to be at all indicative of what's going to win, but I'm just trying to think divisive. Um, I, I, I see this category as being a consolation prize. It oftentimes is a consolation prize. That's why I'm pretty confident that Get Out has its nose in front of the crowd at this point in time. That's where I'm at. I do, I just moved to Get Out into first place. Um, the thing is, Get Out won Writers Guild and won Critics' Choice. BAFTA and Globes went to three billboards for screenplay. Right. So it's very hard. The one thing that we don't have and will never have going into the Oscars is they didn't compete at the Writers Guild, three billboards, Martin McDonough's not a Writers Guild member, so he wasn't eligible. I think that would have given us a better clue. Um, yeah. the, the thing I told Tom O'Neill the day before the Writers Guild, I told him I had a, you know, you ever wake up with like an epiphany? Yeah. And I, I had Lady Bird winning the Writers Guild, and it dawned on me all of a sudden that, that morning before, I thought, no, it's going to be get out for two reasons. One is um, the Writers Guild's very male dominated. And then secondly, I just thought, if you were a writer only, and all, writers don't get to vote for this award at the Oscars, it's everybody voting, but it's just at the Writers Guild, if you were a writer, I think the two movies you most wish you had written this year, to me, were Three Billboards because it was very dialogue, character oriented, yeah. and Get Out because it was very uh, creative and original. So yeah. that's why, I and Three Billboards wasn't eligible, so I thought, you know, Get Out's going to win there. So that's why I went with the, 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 the head scratcher will be if The Shape of Water has a really good night and actually picks this one up in a humongous surprise. So that could well, possibly... Well, we saw that with Birdman, you know, where, where they kind of yeah. overdid it. And get, I mean, Guillermo could win three, just like uh, right. Inuritu did. Exactly. But I think it's, so I think it's good out, but the other thing about three billboards, um, we got to keep moving along, is um, oh, it's, it's um, a playwright, a very noted... Uh, yeah. award-winning playwright, and they, they sometimes, just like uh, TV Emmy voters fall for those Oscar winners, you know, if they're eligible in a category. I think Oscar voters just love playwrights. They do. They do. So let's see what happens. Okay, cinematography. I know everybody's got Roger Deakins. Yeah. And I, and I still have him there, um, but they don't. there's no names on the ballot, and he's mm. lost every other time. And typically this award goes to a best picture nominee. So I don't think he's as safe as people say. No, I agree. And actually I could make an argument for any of these and for a few weeks, just for my own personal satisfaction, I've had my bound in, in the first place. I'm going to move that. I, um, Rachel Morrison is not going to probably win this. I thought it'd be lovely to see her win as a first woman nominated ever in 90 years. But um, Blade Runner seems to be the favourite. It's not a Best Picture nominee. That means who? Will, will it be Dunkirk? Or will it be Shape of Water? I think Darkest Hour is probably behind those two. But I'm all over the shop in this category. I, I haven't made up my mind. What are you saying? Well, I do have Blade Runner. I'm really tempted. Uh, somebody did an article recently, and, and this caused Marcus to switch, Marcus Dixon. The Director and Cinematography Award at the Oscar has gone together the past five, I think it's five straight years. So, wow. so Shape yes. of Water, I think, is more of a contender here than people think. Yes, that's a very good point. Wow. Okay. Well, that just made it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's fly through some of these. I think costume design, we both have Phantom Thread, right? 
I mean, a movie well, about a costume designer. I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> you know, I was clinging to some hope that Beauty and the Beast could do it, but I, I moved Phantom Thread up there because honestly, I mean, that's going to win. <laughs> I think it's going to happen. I think yeah. so too. Film editing. Now, here's one where I have uh, made another switch in the last couple of days. You can do it. Um, well, I've had Dunkirk forever, and I do think it could win. It's three three timelines, so they love that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking back to editing years or years. I don't know that the, as many members of the Academy have seen Baby Driver as Dunkirk. But yes. I think about we've always said it's most editing. Uh, that and, and we've seen a, a girl with a dragon tattoo. We saw the Born, uh, one of the Born movies, when the Matrix, uh, the Matrix. So it doesn't have to be a a, um, a best picture nominee necessarily. It, it's it's uh, most editing, I think, is what they think the the term is. Yeah, this one um, this one's difficult for the reasons you just said. I've had Dunkirk forever. I think Lee Smith is overdue. Not that voters are going to be seeing Lee Smith thinking that he's overdue, but he um, he did a great job with Dunkirk. It's such a well-edited film. When people think about that movie, it's about, a lot of it is about the editing, but Baby Driver is also in the same boat because it's edited to the score or to the actual music that they use. It's very, very ingenious the way they've edited that film, and it's getting noticed for that. It just won the BAFTA right, so am I, am I yeah, wrong? Yeah, and, and, and I would have thought Dunkirk would have been an easy winner there. Easy. But for me, it's great because they're both Australian. They're, they're both nominees for Australian, so I'm going for both. There's a whole other thing. But um, you know what? I'm thinking maybe I'll just go with Baby Driver because that could that could be a nice little surprise on Oscar night. Okay. I think the next three are pretty settled. Makeup and hair. If that's not Darkest Hour, I don't know what is. Yeah, um, that's uh, product, And that goes back to, like, um, um, I'm thinking Iron Lady, you know, also winning yeah. and, and uh, Meryl Streep winning and, and Gary Oldman winning here. And uh, production design, I think everybody has Shape of Water. Um, can't imagine anything else. Score, I think everybody has Shape of Water. Can't imagine anything else. Would you agree on all those? Yeah, I think, uh, again, I'm trying to make an argument for Blade Runner in production design, but it looks like Shape of Water is for the safe bet there. Score, I for, for months, I thought Hans Zimmer was going to finally win his second Oscar for Dunkirk, but I don't think that's going to happen. Alexander Desplat is going to win for Shape of Water. He, he's won pretty much everything else he needs to win. Uh, and that then brings us to what? To song, right? What do you, that one's hurting my brain. Oh, that hurts my head. Um, <laughs> I've got Remember Me. I think it could be This Is Me. Um, this is me has been played at the Olympics over here. I don't know about over there as, as a theme yeah. song. Yes. And, uh, it's also a very big hit on the radio, yeah. but that part did not help Justin Timberlake last year. I mean, that was, that song was everywhere last year at yeah, this time. Um, I just going on the fact that remember me is used throughout the movie yeah. of Coco. And I think way more voters are watching Coco than they are greatest show. Yeah, agreed. Although, God, I'm trying to find an argument for Diane Warren to finally win on her ninth go for Stand Up for Something, and that would be my choice. But this is me. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to switch to it just for fun. I just think I, I, I have a feeling we're going to see at least one or two surprises on Oscar night, and it could be that. That is going to be a showstopper on Oscar night. I hope it opens the show. You know, this group of producers last year opened the show with Justin. I could see something with a huge ensemble on stage and yeah. uh, the lady from the movie has is, is already been confirmed to be performing the song. I could see something where they're saying, this is me, that we, you know, we're Oscar nominees, you know, maybe even have yeah. some nominees on stage. I could really see that yeah, opening the show. The other thing I was going to say quickly like, about song, like, if you look back, yeah. you, you and I are big Disney fans. Every year, the, yeah. the ballad from a Disney movie, which would be Remember Me in this case, always beat the better song. A uh, friend like me and Aladdin's yeah. way better than that ballad. Um, um, the Lion King, uh, Circle of Life is way better than that ballad. Uh, Be Our Guest and Beauty and the Beast is way better than that theme song. Um, yeah, that's so that's another reason why I think the ballad will beat the upbeat song. That's right. but And yeah, I, I, I could try to make an argument for all these, but yeah, it's between those two and frankly, I'm hoping that it's going to be This Is Me because I, I, I'm not really that thrilled with Coco, but that's a whole other thing. So let, maybe we should move on. Okay, quickly, we got five minutes left, four minutes yes. left, four minutes left. Sound editing and sound mixing. Do we both have the same things there? 
I've got, I keep switching between Dunkirk and Baby Driver and I can't kind of keep doing this and I don't know where to go because it's what happened last year with um, Arrival and uh, Hacksaw and it was, it was swapped. What do you think? <laughs> well, remember in both cases, even though we all got it switched opposite, they were both yeah. Best Picture nominees. So yeah. I'm just going to go with Dunkirk for both. They typically like war movies in at least one of these slots and I'll yes. just, I'll just bite the bullet if they, Dunkirk will win one of them and at least I'll be 50% right on the sound. <laughs> It's a good idea. I might do that. Visual effects. Uh, I think almost everybody had. Well, no, everybody's um, either Blade Runner or Planet of the Apes. Which one do you have? I have War of the Planet of the Apes, and I think finally they will recognize this trilogy with this prize, and it's so deserved. But it could be Blade Runner. It could be Star Wars. Um, well, yeah, typically you go with the Oscar Best Picture nominee here, but there's not one. Yeah, there's not. Um, so I just switched this one this weekend to Blade Runner. My only reasoning being every time we've seen visual effects go to Planet of the Apes with their own Guild Awards, it has not gone on to win at the Oscars. So I'm just going to yeah. go Blade Runner. Yeah. Okay. Animated feature, we've got Coco, right? Okay. There's no There's no question. Sorry, everybody else. Okay. Yeah. Documentary, uh, that one's tough. That one's um, tough. Uh, what, what do you, you have? have? At the moment, I have Strong Island, but I'm thinking Faces Places, even Icarus. I don't think the other two are in it at this point. What do you think? I just switched to Last Men in, in Aleppo. Did you really? Yeah, and I have no reason other than he's in the, some of the producers are in the news, just like the people last year about not being able to attend. They can't get visas. Yeah, so. it's that whole every, and it's, Syria is still a pretty hot topic. Um, but Strong Island, I'm, I hear, so I, I'm yet to see it, unfortunately, but I know what it's about, and I hear such strong reactions about it. If they're watching them, maybe it might actually pull through. But this one's a tough one. Yeah, foreign language film. I've got uh, this is another tough one. Uh, Jane, I'm not Jane. Uh, that would have won documentary easily. Um, yeah. There were a couple of movies here where I thought they would actually win and they're not even nominated. <laughs> I'm going Fantastic Woman. I haven't heard anybody dislike that movie. I know yeah. some people that really hated The Square. Yeah. Um, Loveless, I think, is coming on a little bit stronger. Uh, but but uh, I, I, I'm going Fantastic Woman. I think, I think it might be the right time for that movie. I agree. I think A Fantastic Woman is probably out in front. Chile has been the best foreign language film. But I... Have a slight inkle as well because I'm from, the hung from Hungary. I've seen that, um, and it's it's pretty special. So again, I don't think the square is as as a favourite like a lot of people might think it is. It is divisive. Okay. All right. We got a minute to go. We got the shorts. Wait, three more. I uh, I have watched all the shorts now, all fifteen of them. Um, my mind says go with Dear Basketball on animated because yeah. you wouldn't be as aware as they are here, but. This town is crazy for the LA Lakers. Kobe yeah. Bryant is an all-time legend, and I think they'd like to see him on stage. It's not the best of the group. I thought Revolting Rhymes was the best really? animation that I saw, and very easy story to follow. What do you think? Um, I have been going towards negative space, but I currently have new basketball in number one because I just think a lot of lazy voters will probably go down that road. He was a huge hit at the nominee luncheon a couple of weeks ago, yeah. uh, as you would expect. Um, yeah. So they know he's part of the nomination. It's not like a mystery. Um, yeah. I think documentary short is a little easier, personally. I've had Edith and Eddie in first since the beginning. And then once yeah. once I watched everything, it's, it's the sweetest. And it does have a twist in it. And it is sad, too. And I just think all those all that emotion will help it. Yeah, I'm going to Edith and Eddie as well. I think that's a safe bit. Uh, knife skills possibly, but yes, Edith and Eddie, Edith and Eddie looks like the right one. And one to go, and we're about and 30 seconds from the end. I've got, um, I know everybody's predicting DeKalb Elementary, but a lot of times in those likes of like the shorts, if oh, yeah? a child is featured in a prominent way, I, I, that's why I'm going with the silent child. I think three out of these five are very... Um, Gun heavy, violence heavy, and I just think the Silent Child is it looks so different from the other four. 
Yeah. I think you know what I'm going to say in this one. I'm going the 11 o'clock. I, I, I have to. It's part of I, I'm Australian. I have to go for the Australian nominee. I'm sorry. So no one follow me on that one, but that's what I'm putting down. Actually, I think it could win. I was one of the few predicting it to get nominated because it's a comedy, and we've yeah. seen comedies win this before. It's really funny. So I hope it wins. Well, thanks, Rob. We'll do more of these. Everybody jump into the Prediction Center now and get your predictions in or get them changed. And we'll be back uh, on Oscar Sunday. Bye.